Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan, and I hope you lot are doing well. And welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video to see you throughout this international break, giving you interesting insight related to Chelsea Football Club. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the England versus Montenegro game because I'm going to be talking about Tammy Abraham being on the score sheet, which is a huge positive, and a couple of other players that were playing in that starting 11 that aren't Chelsea players at present. Oh, exciting. I'm also going to talk about the possible and maybe probable upcoming exits of two Chelsea players in both World Cup winner Olivier Giroud and Willian, with both players having loads of suitors that are after them. I'll be talking about that a little bit. So, loads of fun, but a quick reminder for you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. Just do it quickly, subscribe, and make sure you hit that bell notifications icon and like the video, please. <laughs> Right, so England put another team to the sword last night in their Euro qualifiers, a 7-0 thrashing at Wembley. Sure, the headlines should quite rightly go to Harry Kane, who's got yet another hat-trick, and he's looking like quite the iconic England centre-forward. But you know what? So could Tammy Abraham. He could be an iconic centre-forward. He comes on, gets 30 minutes of playtime, Puts himself about, looks really, really good, and scores a great goal. Abraham is a man on fire at the moment, and it looks like throughout the season, throughout all competitions, for club and country, I think the man's going to bag a lot of goals, and I think loads of people in the football media, punditry and stuff, everyone's backing him. Tammy's still very, very young, and he's got loads of experience under his belt at, you know, like championship level. He's just used to scoring first-team goals, but now he's doing it in the limelight on the biggest stage, and he's absolutely got the ability to keep going, and I think... If anything happens to Kane in terms of injury or illness or something happens to his form, the first player I think Gareth Southgate is going to look to to play centre forward is Tammy Abraham. Especially seeing as Marcus Rashford does look much better on the flank. But in that game, he was assisted by his South East London homeboy Jaden Sancho. Posted a picture of them celebrating together saying boys from South London now on the biggest stage or something like that. And this is just a little bit of fun, but Jaden Sancho recently came out in an interview and said his favourite players to watch growing up was uh, Frank Lampard and Didier Drogba. Look, we know he's a Chelsea fan. We know he's really good mates with Hudson Adoy. We know he's grown up in the same area as Tammy and just apparently likes assisting him. This is just a bit of fun. Obviously, there have been heavy links to Jaden Sancho as there's been links to other clubs, but probably the two biggest other clubs he's been linked with are the Manchester clubs, and I doubt he'll go back to City after he left, and I doubt he'll go to Manchester United if he's just got any sense at all. Still, Chelsea might not see it as a healthy investment in terms of the amount of money it would cost, and also, Chelsea have an amazingly informed player in Christian Pulisic, and if Jadon Sancho comes to Chelsea, it would just might be haunting him, he's just following him around trying to ruin his career. <laughs> Personally, I think it would still be an amazing signing and we'll see what will happen there. A quick shout out to another player who played in that game who also has been heavily linked to Chelsea on and off for the last year or so. It's Ben Chilwell. England starting left back. Three assists in that game. You could argue it's easy to get three assists when there's seven goals, but not necessarily from a fullback. He looked very, very good indeed. He's very much a complete package. Um, as a left back. If you think about the three best left backs in the Premier League, it's Andy Robertson, Luca Dean and Ben Chilwell. For Chelsea to secure one of the three best left backs in the league and indeed the starting left back for England, uh, to sort of go with Frank Lampard's young, exciting, explosive revolution, that would be a superb acquisition and it does look more and more like Alonso should be sort of gently pushed out the door and thanked for his what is superb service at Chelsea Football Club. Obviously integral in a Premier League win under Antonio Conte as a left wing back, as well as winning an FA Cup under Antonio Conte and, you know, playing a part in Europa Leagues and stuff like that. So, I just wanted to touch on Tammy Abraham basically continuing his good form and a couple of probable targets that also played in that game moving forwards. Right, next up, Chelsea's currently forgotten man, Olivier Giroud. Now, this has been the talk of Chelsea recently, how he's not getting anywhere near the team, he's clearly third choice and therefore basically doesn't get a sniff and when a team like Chelsea gets goals from all over the pitch your third choice striker really isn't going to get a sniff. If you need a goal you bring on your other striker and then maybe another attacking midfielder or a winger Giroud won't see much playtime. But Olivier Giroud is the starting number nine for the World Cup winners France. He scored the winning goal for France last night and although they were already qualified this 
win sees him top the group. Didier Deschamps was singing his praises in his post-match presser. He's basically been echoing the sentiments that he's been talking about all along, how, you know, they really, really value him. He's going to be the starting striker for the Euros, and he would like him to be playing more at Chelsea Football Club. But what Deschamps likes doesn't necessarily have any effect on Frank Lampard or Chelsea as a club. Giroud in this Chelsea side looks like a man lost. I think he's got a lot to offer Giroud. He is a bit of a cult hero at Chelsea Football Club and has been really ever since he arrived winning the FA Cup being integral in the Europa League final, scoring the opener against Arsenal, his old club. Scoring that goal against, I think it was Southampton, the dribbling goal and just a bunch of good headers. He's been like a superb player and in the short time he's been at Chelsea, he's worked very, very hard and put everything on the pitch. So he is a cult hero at Chelsea and he's still got a lot to offer teams, clearly the world champions in France. But sadly, not really anything at Chelsea. So really, an exit should be imminent, and I'm talking January. He needs some club playtime before the summer and before the Euro start. Deschamps will be really, really wanting that to happen too. And really, Olivier Giroud should want that. Now, Giroud's been linked to a bunch of clubs. He's been linked to a move to Italy, to Inter Milan, actually. And now, he's recently been linked to a January move to Dortmund. Dortmund are looking to bolster their centre forward position. They're actually looking at the likes of Zlatan Ibrahimovic as a free agent for maybe a six month contract or something. But I imagine they'd quite comfortably give Olivier Giroud an 18 month contract. Dortmund are a huge side and that would be probably quite a good move for Giroud. But will he move there? I don't think so. I feel like Giroud will understand he needs to get a move. But he's just talked about how he'd maybe go to MLS to finish his career rather than China, you know, mid-30s for like three years till he's late 30s maybe, because he wants the English language and he wants to bring his family with him who can all speak English. So a sudden, perhaps a bit more radical move to somewhere like M Milan or, or Dortmund might be a little bit too much for him. I mean, maybe not. Maybe he'll just see it as a proper work thing and not a home thing, leave his family at home go play there for like 18 months, get some, you know, game time and experience. He doesn't really need experience, but a new experience under his belt, play in the Euros and then go to MLS or something. He has actually been linked to a couple of Premier League moves. I think one he was linked to was West Ham and that would suit him because he likes staying in London. He was really stoked on the Chelsea move because Chelsea win loads of trophies in comparison to Arsenal of late, but also he got to stay in London and West Ham, again, he'll get to stay in London. I've spoken about this before, this potential move. I imagine it would work well for him because he could just play in wingers like Yarmolenko and Felipe Anderson and, you know, hopefully just link up the wide inverted forwards. But it's all theoretical still. Everything aside, it looks like for the good of the player, for the good of Chelsea Football Club, and for the good of Didier Deschamps that he does move in January. So we'll have to see what happens with that one, man. And from a senior player who doesn't seem to be working out in this Chelsea squad to a senior player who... Quite surprisingly, is working out really well in this Chelsea squad. It's Willian. Now, Willian has been superb for Chelsea this season. He's not going to score as many goals as Pulisic or Tammy Abraham or maybe even Mason Mount. But the way he plays and what he brings to the team with his industry and his maturity and his technical ability and creativity is irreplaceable at the moment. Willian will play till the summer and he'll play well for Chelsea and he'll be an important part of Frank Lampard's squad but his contract runs out at the end of the season. Now, no particular Chelsea fans would have cried for Willian. I think everyone should and would have thanked him for his service at Chelsea, but a lot of people were suspecting that maybe his time was done. But he is proving that that is not necessarily the case this season. Clearly, Chelsea coach Frank Lampard would like to keep Willian and extend his contract by one, maybe even two years. Remember, Lampard himself played well into his 30s, so he'll be looking at 31-year-old Willian thinking, yeah, you, you know, I'll happily give you a couple of years. Chelsea Football Club don't work that way mate. The thing is, imagine if they gave him a two year contract, they could sell him in a year's time and that would work well for Chelsea because they'd make some money on him and they'd get one more decent serviceable year out of him. But the truth is, this is coming down to what the player wants now. William loves playing for Chelsea, I think he's very very happy in London with his family and he's obviously happy playing under Frank and enjoys playing with his teammates. But he's no mug in the sense of he'll want a decent contract and he'll want to make good money and he'll want to make a good business decision. Now. Enter the two clubs that have expressed interest in Willian. Firstly, Juventus, that who if they signed him in the summer on a free transfer would make the quintessential Juve free transfer signing that they always do, like Rabio, Ramsey. There's just, just so many people they're constantly getting on free transfers and Emre Chan, I think as well. Anyway, that would be classically Juventus. But also, apparently after this two year period, 
Barcelona are still really, really interested in the Brazilian. Which is interesting because I thought they'd, <laughs> unlike Juventus, who are probably a bit more comfortable with going with a slightly older player, I thought Barcelona would see him as a little bit too old. I mean, maybe if it's a free transfer as well, they've wanted the type of player for a while. They'll just take him and give him quite a few games. Um, they might just have the money to give him a three-year contract, even if they only play him a little bit and they sell him to China in, say, two years. So Willian's going to be thinking, right, I love playing at Chelsea, but they're only going to give me 12 months. They're only going to give me 12 months, or I can move to Barcelona, you know, what may be the greatest team in La Liga, or Juventus, definitely the greatest team in Serie A, win guaranteed titles and get, like, a three-year contract. So this leaves Chelsea and Chelsea fans in a difficult predicament. I mean... It would be frustrating to lose what's happening on the pitch right now, but really, if it means Chelsea lose both Pedro and Willian, because let's be honest, I think Pedro's time is done at Chelsea. So I see Pedro going regardless, but if Willian goes as well, that would kind of demand the acquisition of one top, top tier winger. And that's when you're thinking of like, you know, your Jaden Sancho's and your Hakim Ziyech's and stuff like that. So that would be exciting, right? And obviously it's bringing the age down yet again. So this is a very interesting one that we will keep an eye on here at Football Therapy. And I will keep you guys posted what happens with both Giroud and William because I think both their times might be running out. What do you guys think? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. Get down in the comments below and express your thoughts on all the stuff I've talked about today. And yeah, I'll be down there reading it. Remember, if you've enjoyed the content, like the video and do subscribe if you're new. And if, you, if you've made it this far into the video, go and subscribe to Yan Plays, my gaming channel. It's loads of fun. I play FIFA. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick, Twitter and Instagram. And remember, you can join the Football Therapy Discord server via clicking on the Patreon link in the description. I'm out, ladies and gentlemen. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. Way so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger. Like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I let me be.